from somewhere, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I'm talking a little more. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon, though. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I rarely, on this program, share with you one of my passions in life. Because I know that most people do not see this as a passion. And I know that reading a newspaper is rapidly becoming uh, an anachronism. But I don't even read it as a newspaper anymore. I read it as a website. And this is one of my passions in life. It's reading the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal. Many of you ask me how I became a self-made millionaire. Many of you ask me. How do I know so much about so many things? And uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say to you that the Wall Street Journal has a lot to do with it. It does. I uh, enjoy reading the Wall Street Journal because... It is always right on top of something that's going on right now, and they have great analysis. They dissect all this stuff. Even you, the average moron, even you, <laughs> don't come on, don't don't get hurt so easily, please, you pussy. Even you would understand what's in the Wall Street Journal. Now, you could read it if you wanted to. I am going to read you an opinion piece. From the August 4th edition of the Wall Street Journal. I'm telling you the date so you can look it up and read along if you like. I don't get into political conversations. And this is not going to be ostensibly a political conversation. But I'm going to read it to you anyway. And here it is. This piece is called, What is a Windfall Profit? And it goes like this. The windfall profits tax is back. With Barack Obama stumping again to apply it to a handful of big oil companies. Which raises a few questions. What is a windfall profit anyway? How does it differ from your everyday run-of-the-mill profit? Is it some absolute number? A matter of return on equity or sales? Or does it merely depend on who earns it? Inquiring entrepreneurs want to know. Unfortunately, it says here, Mr. Obama's, quote, emergency plan, announced on Friday of last week, doesn't offer any clarity. To pay for so-called stimulus checks of $1,000 for families and $500 for individuals. The senator says government would take, quote, a reasonable share of oil company profits. Mr. Obama didn't bother to define reasonable. And neither did Dick Durbin, the second-ranking Senate Democrat when he recently declared, quote, that the oil companies need to know that there is a limit on how much profit they can take in this economy. Really, says the author of this piece, this extraordinary redefinition of free market success could use some parsing. Take ExxonMobil, which last Thursday 
reported the highest quarterly profit ever and is the main target of any windfall tax surcharge. Yet if its profits are at record highs, its tax bills are already at record highs too. Between 2003 and 2007, ExxonMobil paid $64.7 billion in U.S. taxes, exceeding its after-tax U.S. earnings by more than $19 billion. That sounds like a government windfall to us, but perhaps we're missing some Obama-Durban business subtlety. Maybe they have in mind profit margins as a percentage of sales. Yet by that standard, Exxon's profits don't seem so large. Exxon's profit margin stood at 10% for 2007, which is hardly out of line with the oil and gas industry average of 8.3%, or the 8.9% for U.S. manufacturing, excluding the sputtering automakers. If that's what constitutes windfall profits, most of corporate America would qualify. Take aerospace or machinery, both 8.2% in 2007. Chemicals had an average margin of 12.7%. Computers, 13.7%. Electronics and appliances, 14.5%. Pharmaceuticals, 18.4%. And beverages and tobacco, 19.1%. Round out the Census Bureau's industry rankings. The latter two double the returns of big oil, though, of course, the government has already become a tacit shareholder in big tobacco through the various legal settlements that guarantee a revenue stream for years to come. In a tax bill on oil earlier this summer, no fewer than 51 senators voted to impose a 25% windfall tax on a U.S.-based oil company whose profits grew by more than 10% in a single year and wasn't investing enough in, quote, renewable energy. This suggests that a windfall is defined by profits growing too fast. No one knows where that 10% came from besides political convenience. But if 10% is the new standard, the tech industry is going to have to rethink its growth arc. So will LG, the electronics company, which saw its profits grow by 505% in 2007. Abbott Laboratories hit 110%. If Senator Obama is as exercised about outrageous profits as he says he is, he might also have to turn on a few liberal darlings, oh, say, Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett's outfit pulled in $11 billion last year, up 29% from 2006. Its profit margin, if that's the relevant figure, was 11.47%, which beats out the American oil majors. Or consider Google, which earned a mere $4.2 billion, but at a whopping 25.3% margin. Google earns far more from each of its sales dollars than does Exxon. But why doesn't Mr. Obama consider its advertising search windfall worthy of special taxation? And it goes on. Why? Why? Why do people talk about this? Why do people think this is a good idea? Windfall profits tax against the oil company. You know why? Because the average loser, the average slacker, doesn't work hard, isn't creative, doesn't take risks, doesn't save, doesn't invest, and therefore hates anybody who does. I mean, uh, on a simpler uh, level right here on the ground, I get this all the time. People telling me I'm like a lottery winner, telling me that I'm lucky, I just got lucky. And of course, many people being angry about the amount of money I make or the amount of money I spend or the amount of money I save and invest. Lots of people get angry about it. Why in the world do we need to tax the profits of oil companies any further than they're already taxed? I might add, by the way, that all of us probably own stock in an oil company one way or another. How? Well, if you don't own an energy mutual fund as I do, Maybe you own a mutual fund called something like the S&P 500 Index Fund of a company like Vanguard or many other companies, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, other mutual fund companies. Virtually all of those funds own stock in oil companies. Your 401k, your IRA, chances are in there you own stock in an oil company. And when the government taxes those companies, who do you think is going to pay? 
That's right. You. Your retirement, your savings, your hard work. You're the one who's going to pay for it. All that so we can send checks to the laziest and least productive among us. Anybody out there think taxing the oil companies for their windfall profits is a good idea? Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. I've been listening to you since I was a little pussy. What? And now I get all the tail I can possibly think of, man. The Tom Likes Show. <laughs> Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5-800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Why in the world should we increase the taxes that oil companies make? No, why? Explain this to me. I want to hear your explanation. Alex, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom? Yes. Why would you say that oil companies should not be taxed at this time, especially with the economy being really Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop. I didn't say they shouldn't be taxed. Did you hear what I read in the story? ExxonMobil, the company everybody is out to get, last year uh, ended a four-year stretch where they paid $64.7 billion in U.S. taxes. That's U.S. taxes alone. But what percentage of that is that from their money? I mean, it's a small percentage. No, it's the same percentage. It's the same percentage every other company pays. Right, but see, oil companies, especially like Exxon, figured out that they could make more money by producing the same amount of oil. They're not making any efforts to produce more oil. It becomes a. Have you heard? By the way, Exxon doesn't own all the oil. All they do is refine the oil. They had they they may they do find some oil, but most of the oil is not produced by the Exxon Corporation. I right, mean, the but fact they're not is, doing anything to to help that. What are they supposed to do? They're supposed to help find ways to produce more oil or produce other ways of. Uh, and you think taxing oil. them is going to be the incentive for them to do more? I believe that the taxing that they, that's going to happen to them should be put onto uh, onto this research. You know what I they're going to do? Th- you know what they're going to do when they, when they are taxed? What? They're going to add it to the price of a gallon of gasoline. And you know what, sucker? You're going to pay for it. Well, we have no choice. We're, we're at their Well, throat. so what you're, what you would like to pay higher gasoline prices. You're in favor of that. I am not in, in higher. Uh, well, what you're I'm endorsing is going to create higher gasoline prices. You don't think that the oil companies are going to absorb that cost, do you? Well, they should. I mean, they, they have to. Be but they price. won't. And there's no law that can prevent them from doing that. No, and why? And why? Why should there be? You know what? I'm a stockholder in that company through a mutual fund. And okay. uh, and 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 when when you raise the tax, number one, it's going to cost me money because I own this mutual fund. Bond. Beyond that, it's going to raise the price of a gallon of gasoline for everybody. But when it well, what if we start producing more oil? What if we start getting some more oil from somewhere else? I mean, but does that have to do with whether what? How is taxing the Exxon Corporation going to make that possible? Well, see, I feel like instead of taxing no, no, tell me how how taxing the oil. I want you to go over the mechanics of it. How is taxing the oil company where, where they're just going to tack on the cost and pass it on to you? How is that going to give them an incentive to look for more oil? Because they're getting taxed more on it, and that's why. That's why. But 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 why would their incentive be? Well, they have no incentive now. We're paying through the roof. And taxing them and is not going to give them an incentive either. Well, it's going to allow them to do something different, as opposed to you know keep the price. What the is that going to do? It, see, the whole the whole purpose of taxing them this way is to try to balance out. Uh, what's going on with the oil right now and the supply that you we can't have. you can't balance it out. The, you know why? You know why the price of a gallon of gasoline is so high? Why? You think it's because of the Exxon Mobil Corporation? No, I know it's not because of that. So why are you blaming them and punishing them? Because we're in a down economy and they are and they're shoveling profits that are unheard of. 
for did you hear the did you hear the article I just read? I did. I did. Their profit margins are lower than many other companies, and the companies are named in this article. Right, but the other companies are not selling something that we use every day at such a high price. What, 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 the point is they're selling it at a high price because that's what it costs to buy a barrel of oil. That's what it. That's what it Exxon. Ex. Did you do you understand what the article is saying when it says that Exxon's profit margin is ten percent? Do you know what that means? Yeah, I, I completely understand what that means, and that's a low. So, margin. if other companies are making a higher profit margin, why not punish them too? I don't disagree with that, but I. I so you think we say, should punish uh, computer companies, appliance companies, pharmaceutical companies? Beverage companies. You think Coca Cola should be uh, punished or Snapple? Mm, I should no. I, I why not? Uh, but they're making unbelievable profits. Their profits are almost twice as high as Exxon's. But see, that's just the type of industry they're in. You so what? what? what so what? Who is so? Who are it's, you in a free market society to decide what profits a private company should make? A private company that you probably own shares in. Now, well, I don't own shares on it. I, I have my. How do you know? Else, what, is, what is your four hundred one k invested in? I have it in international stocks. I have and how do you know? Stocks. How do you know that Exxon Mobil is not one of those stocks? I haven't looked into it thoroughly, I guess. That's right. Chances are, ExxonMobil is such a big company, chances are you own shares of it. I bet. So the but, fact but is, but the, the who industry, are you to decide industry, how much is too much profit? Who are you to decide that? I'm not. I'm no one to decide that, but the oil industry, that's that's the margin that people get. There's different industries that that's a norm as far as profits. You yes, know, you go to the Exxon does industry. not make anything. I, the oil and gas industry averages 8.3%. U.S. manufacturing, 8.9% average. Let me ask you this. Do you feel that they have an influence in helping produce more oil and help level out the supply and demand that we have, no. that we have here? No. The only way to level out supply and demand is to demand less. Then there'll be more of a supply. But we're not going to be mad less. That's the problem. We need but, but, to get but, but it's not. That's not Exxon's fault. But they have an influence power that we don't as regular. What people, influence right? power do they have? A lot more than me and you. I, tell me what Exxon could possibly do. I go to the people in Saudi Arabia and say, "Please lower the price of a barrel of oil, please." You, you, you think you think they're trying to pay the highest possible price? I am sure they. I'm sure that they're not. But at the same time, I'm so sure if you're sure they're anything. not, well, if you're sure they're not, if you're sure they're just paying what the going price is and they have no choice, how is taxing them going to change it? Well, it's going to make them rethink their strategy and how to. No, 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 you keep saying the same thing. I, I, you just said they can't buy the oil any cheaper than they're getting it. But they have more you said that. What can they do? Tell me specifically. Don't tell me they can change their strategy. I want you to tell me the specific things this company could do to get countries like Venezuela and Saudi Arabia to lower the price of a barrel of oil. What could they do that they're not already doing? Specifically. Specifically, I think they could say, "Look, we need we we need you to lower the price." And I mean, you think they haven't? You think they haven't done that? You think Exxon Mobil goes to Saudi Arabia and says, "Who cares how much it is? Charge two hundred dollars a barrel. Who cares? Do you really think they do that?" Well, you say yourself, if they raise the price, they're just going to pass the cost on to us. So they don't. But passing the cost on to that. you doesn't. Passing the cost on to you has nothing to do with that. Yes, it does. You By the way, as a stockholder, I hope they pass the cost on to you. I hope if there's a windfall profits tax that the price of gasoline goes up to six or seven dollars a barrel, a, a gallon. Good luck to you. Good luck to everyone, right? But well, but it, but guess what? I can afford to pay it, and you can't. Well, I have a company car, so I can't say that. You can't say. That oh, me, no wonder you don't care about the price of gasoline. But I do because I also own a, a, a regular vehicle. You know, I, well, I do care about guess it. Guess what? So. Adding a tax is not going to lower the price of gasoline. It's going to raise the price of gasoline. 
Yeah, I can see that, but I guess what I'm trying to argue. So you're willing to pay more. Oil companies. So you're willing. Wait, you're willing to pay more. I'm not willing to pay more. You, but but that's what's going to happen, and this is what you're endorsing. Well, see, I just feel like the the oil companies need to influence more the the price. What can they do? What is it that they can do? You've got Hugo Chavez, the nut who runs Venezuela. Right. Uh, and in Venezuela, he's selling gasoline for nine cents a gallon. Okay. Now, what do you think the Exxon Mobil Corporation could do to get him to sell us oil at a more reasonable price? Tell us what he can do. Business what they can is do. all about relationships, Tom. Tell you me what. That. No, no. Tell me what they can do. Provide him a bigger incentive. I'm sure they get a what incentive. Back. I mean, what what incentive sure does what incentive does Hugo Chavez have to sell us a barrel of oil for for less than he's selling? What is his incentive? I, I guarantee you that Venezuela and Saudi Arabia they get a kickback from Exxon on where every barrel of oil and whatever we they consume. A kickback? Yes. How do you, you can't get a you only get a kickback when you <laughs> when you when you sell something, not when you buy something. Um. It's just, it works both ways, Tom, in business. No, it doesn't. It does not. And for example, if, if I help a realtor find somebody to buy a house, the realtor might give me a kickback. Okay? Okay. But if I buy a house, the realtor's not going to give me a kickback. Well, let me ask you this. If I sell you something at 60 bucks, right, and you, you get no kickback, right? But if I sell it to you at 70 bucks, and you buy it at seventy bucks. I have ten dollars to play with in there. But it's not a kickback. I would have gotten it for sixty bucks, and you not played that game. Do you have uh, any yeah. evidence that there is such a kickback? I will. I will look it up right now. I'm on the internet on two different computers. Where did you read about kickbacks in the oil industry? I want to know. It's an unspoken truth of. Oh, energy. how do you know that? Are you in the oil? Are you in the oil business? I'm not. I'm not. So it's an unspoken, it's unspoken, it's unwritten. You are not in the oil business. You've never been to Saudi Arabia or Venezuela. So how do you know about this if it's unspoken? I'm speculating, okay? You are and speculating. So in other words, you pulled it out of your ass. I did. I did. There we go. That's enough. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Armando on the Tom Likas show. Hello. I believe taxing the uh, windfalls of these uh, big oil... What is a windfall? Can you tell me exactly what a windfall would be defined as, please? Uh, profits made after... I assume profits made after... Uh, hiking. No, up I, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying what you assume. Like, I'm asking you. What does that mean to you? It, it sounds to me... me no, not what it, it sounds, sounds like. What does it mean to you? In your opinion, start the sentence with, in my opinion, a windfall profit is what? In my opinion, windfall profit is money that they've gotten from uh, from raising the price of oil. And wait, 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 who it, raised, wait, wait, who raised the price of oil? Uh, prob- probably the speculators who have been speculating about the cost of oil. Do they the- work for Do they work for Exxon Mobil or Chevron? I thought the speculators work for uh, all the oil companies. No, the speculators work for hedge funds and other financial organizations on Wall Street. I see. See, so you I don't even that. know what a speculator is. Well, I, I, I assume speculators work for the oil companies. In why order would you? To... Ass- why would? Why would the oil companies employ speculators? They don't want the price being higher. They want. They want to get oil at the cheapest possible price. Let's just look at it this way. If they want to make big profits, they want to get the raw materials at the lowest possible price, not the highest possible price. Yeah, but they're still passing the cost on to us, the consumer. They are. But why, did, why would they want to get it at the highest possible price? That is a, yeah, that's a good question. But, right. So, But you already have an opinion, even though you haven't even thought it out. Well, here's, well, here's what I'm thinking about. With, here's my opinion of, regarding oil companies. I believe that they're going to be uh, taking oil, uh, buying oil, and selling it to us at the highest possible uh, price in order to make the biggest profit. But here's the problem. Oil causes um, a domino effect on everything else in our lives. I'm talking about food. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about everything that... So um, stop using so much of it. 
you're saying they eat less? Eat less because the price. You know, we're not talking about down. eating less. You know as well as I do that when you get in that 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 uh, the, that big gas guzzling SUV and and waddle on down to Starbucks for a frappuccino and then drive it back empty with nothing but you in it, you know damn well you you use more gasoline than you should have. Okay, that's a, yeah, that is a waste of energy. I do but not, it's not just a waste of energy. It is the primary reason that the price of oil is so high because the demand is so high. And I did have one comment about what you were saying, what Exxon can do to help out with this situation. I say how about investing a lot of that windfall cash in some alternative energy. I'm talking about uh, getting uh, maybe solar or getting... Why is that uh, Exxon's problem? That's not Exxon's business. They're an oil company. If yeah, they, but they if what, what, you country, you think you think that people who've never invested a dollar of their own money in a business should be telling private businesses what businesses they should be in and how to conduct business? Well, it is it, that is a touchy situation. When well, then to explain it. I want you. I want you to justify it right now. I would justify it by saying that if all of us, uh, being John Q. citizen and whatnot, are uh, paying more for the cost of fuel. You're paying more because the cost of a barrel of oil is the highest it's ever been. That's why you're paying more. The reason a price of a barrel of oil is more than it's ever been is not because of ExxonMobil. I'll tell you what the reasons are. The number one reason, because the dollar is in the crapper. Because the dollar is worth less than it's been in decades. And now, number two reason... Emerging countries like China and India, with emerging economies, their demands have gone up. They use more oil than ever. So there's more competition to buy each barrel of oil, which raises the price. Do you I understand? Have, yeah, I understand. And I did have one other comment. So what about, does, what, how, explain to me what the Exxon Mobil Corporation or Chevron, specifically what they have done that's, that's so wrong. If the price of a barrel of oil at one time was $20 or $40 or $50, and it's now $124, uh, don't you think they have to pass that cost on to the consumer? Do you, honest, do you honestly believe, Tom, that by, by these companies lowering the price of a gallon of gas by maybe $0.10 cents or $0.25, cents, that that's actually going to put them out of business? That is not like your business. Have... That is not that, your business. I'm the that is not your business. That it, you know what? It is not your business. And I, isn't it interesting how people like you never want to just use less? Oh, and by the way, the oil that's used to make gasoline and the cars that run them and all the businesses that sell oil-related or gas-related products, these are all ingrained in the U.S. system since, what, the turn of the century? From, from, uh, uh, from the last century? There, there, nobody's going to change this. Who is, all, stopping? Who is stopping? Who is stopping? Huh? Who, is, who is stopping anybody from building an electric car? Yeah. All right. Well, well your, your connection is getting terrible. But, uh, they, yeah, of course they've been in great. What's stopping anybody? They, they've tried ethanol. They're trying hybrid cars. They're trying all electric vehicles. General Motors has a, uh, a hydrogen powered vehicle scheduled to come out in the year 2010. Uh, it's not like people aren't trying. Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Aaron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm just always blown away by this topic. I mean, how much do people think an oil company, you know, from from A to Z, from from get from from finding the oil to drilling the oil to getting it to you down the street from your house? You know, they spend you know, billions of dollars to go and get this product for you, and yet people think they should make like a couple hundred grand in profit. And it's just, you know, I, I really take offense to all these callers that sit here and complain. Do us all a favor. Be out of credit card debt and stop spending like a fool, and then complain about the price of gas. Because the problem isn't that they can't afford it. I mean... There are some that can't, but the real issue is people aren't responsible with their money, and they want us to pick up the dead weight. I mean, I deal with this all day long with health insurance. I'm in the health insurance business, and it's the same story I hear all the time. You know, big, bad, you know, Aetna or Blue Cross, you know, they're taking half of my premium dollars. No, they're not. They're lucky to make, you know, three cents on the dollar. Seventy-five cents of every dollar you spend goes to pay for doctors, nurses, drugs, 
you know, treatments. It's just amazing to me. I think the biggest problem is the American society. Get out of debt. Start being responsible. Maybe walk to go get your dinner once in a while instead of driving. And, you know, the world would be a little bit better for you. But, you know, I don't have a problem with these oil companies making money like this. I mean, back to my first question. How much would you want if you sunk, you know, $50 billion into finding oil for people? Well, this is all based on the ignorance of the average person. I mean, the average person has no idea that they own stock in oil companies themselves. Yeah. No, through mutual funds and whatnot, sure. And then they have 401ks and IRAs and pension funds. Uh, most people, I would venture to say, own at least one share of stock at an oil company. But, but Tom, isn't it, isn't it, doesn't it put a big smile on your face when you sit there and you know you've done the right things to stay out of debt? And now if you want to capitalize on gas, you can go afford to buy some of the stock? Absolutely. I mean, imagine that. Just It's strange how that works, isn't it? That's right. Well, uh, I haven't sold my shares of the energy industry. No, neither have I. It's been great. That's right. And it's going to keep going. Thanks. Well, can you take me out with a bong hit no cough? I certainly can. Thanks. No cough. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Town. Like 1 800 5800 866. Please, man, listen. Listen. Tie yourselves up. Go put a condom on. Pay attention. Women are sick. It's the Tom Likey Show. Yeah, it's the Tom Likey Show. Me, I'm the proprietor. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Barack Obama is campaigning for a windfall profits tax on all companies. I don't like to talk about politics, but come on. What is this going to accomplish? Do tell. Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, hello, Tom. It's great to be on the show. I'm uh, sure. Tom, lift, uh, putting more tax on oil companies from their profits will act, will increase uh, the cost of the consumer, as you've been saying, because the oil companies know that the there's a limit to how much they can charge because people won't pay that. After they reach that threshold, people will start investing more into the hybrids, more into the hydrogen. BMW has the Hydro 7, for example, that they've released to certain people to know so that the politicians know what's possible. Well, why make uh, a windfall profits tax? If all you want is the price of gasoline to go up, why don't we just make a law that says the, uh, the oil companies can't charge less than $8 a gallon like they charge in Europe? I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Thank you for calling. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, this is Ali on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi there, Tom. Long time. Hi. This is my first time calling. Yes. Um, it sounds good. I want to share a couple of things with you. First, most important is that um, I read the same publishings as you do, as you mentioned. Uh, and uh, one of the articles I read about a few days ago on Forbes magazine, and it stated that ExxonMobil spends nearly $63 million per day in investigating new forms of energy and finding more ways to produce oil. Whether it be renewable energy or oil, both of these, they spent $63 million per day, which comes out to about $2.3 billion per year. It's like certainly that. in their best interest to do that, and I'm sure they are doing what's in their best interests. And the uh, second thing that I wanted to share with you, it, it feels good to hear your passion because I've been doing the same thing since I was 20 years old, reading all those publishings that you said. And, uh, and you know, it, Forbes puts out a list every year where they have uh, billionaires. They ask them, you know, how much they're reading and all of this. And I think every billionaire, the first 10 um, world's richest billionaires, an average, they said they read about two to four hours a day, every day, just to keep up with all everything that's going on in the world. It takes that much time. And uh, what is amazing to me is how many people don't do any reading, but they've got very strong opinions based on ignorance. Thank you. The first color that you had. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, thank you so much, Tom. Can you please take me out the African style? African tribal style. Here you go, Ali. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge.
It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. First time caller, long time listener. I, Great. I wanted to kind of uh, interject with maybe a little bit of a conspiracy theory that I have personally. Why Why, why don't you inject with a fact or a, an opinion? Why do you need a conspiracy theory? Well, that's just a, for lack of a better term. How about just an opinion? I think you have that, an opinion, which is not based, let's point out, this opinion is not based on fact, it's not based on research, it's not based on reading, it's not based on your knowledge of the oil business or of business in general. Would that be right? That would be somewhat accurate. I would just kind of go with what I've seen and just kind of... What you've some, seen? Are you in the oil business? Other than a consumer, no. So what, what have you seen, sir? Well, I've seen that since the price of oil has increased up to well over $100 a barrel, I've seen that a lot of Americans would like to see our own oil reserves tapped into. And if I was a big oil company and saw that there was an opportunity here for, you know, for some money to be made domestically on our oil reserves, go ahead and inflate the price of the oil and let the people complain about the fact that it's so expensive and push to get it pumped domestically. And I think that maybe they want the prices of oil to go up because then that allows for there to be enough uh, enough complaining for this to go ahead and happen in our own country, to go ahead and start pumping let me ask you a que- Let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, all right, you got Exxon Mobil. They've got Exxon stations and mobile stations, and you got Chevron which has Texaco stations, if they're still out there somewhere, and you got and, and Chevron stations, of course, and you got BP, and BP owns in uh, the Southern California, they own 76, they own Arco stations, what have you. Uh-huh. And you got that company called Valero. But, uh, you know, other companies sell gasoline, too. Like, let's start with Costco. Costco, uh, are you a Costco member? I'm not, but I'm, I'm familiar with that they sell the... They do you sell- agree with what they do? They try to sell quality products at the lowest possible price? I do. So why doesn't Costco sell gasoline for $2 a gallon? Well, because Costco buys it from the same place that all the other places buy it from, I'm guessing, because uh, Costco doesn't pump their own oil out of the ground and they don't refine it themselves. They well, you understand from- that so does ExxonMobil. Exxon Mobil buys most of their oil from other countries. Uh, same with Chevron, same with BP. I agree. So uh, why are the oil companies any more evil than Costco? Well, I'm not. I wouldn't say that anyone is more evil than the other. What I'm saying is, it would be in their best interest to let the oil prices go up. Then they could, you know, allow the American people to get in such an outrage and such a push, so we can pump our own domestic oil. I think you know, oil has been unreasonably cheap. Uh, in Europe, gasoline is $8 a gallon. Yeah, I, I, I know that. I've been to Europe before. I, I've seen it, you know, back in the late you 90s. You know, our economy uh, over the years has been uh, largely a function of un- unreasonably high home prices, which allowed the morons and the flippers out there to get home equity loans and spend money they didn't have. And artificially low gasoline prices. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that Americans have just become so used to our fuel being cheap. And and Americans are a bunch of morons who never read a paper, uh, never uh, study up on any of this stuff, know nothing about economics, know nothing about other countries. So uh, they're just, yeah, tax the oil company, yeah, right, yeah, based on nothing. Not even realizing that many of them are stockholders in the same oil companies that they're they're proposing to punish. I agree with you, Tom. I just thought maybe there would be some other, you know, uh, reason behind the oil companies allowing the oil to get so expensive. Maybe they have... They, they, what do you think? The oil companies don't control... Saudi Arabia controls how much they sell a barrel of oil for. Not Chevron. Okay, well, I'm, what I'm saying is the foreign oil, I'm, I'm just saying I think that American, the, the American oil companies do have interest in South America. A lot of our oil comes from South America. Venezuela nationalized uh, American oil and gas operations. D- didn't you read about that? I must have missed that article. Yeah. You might, uh, you might study up on this stuff. Jesus.
One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Alex. Hey, I, I just think this whole tax is stupid. The stimulus check is stupid, and the whole reason why I'm saying this is because I never wanted a stimulus check. You know, it's good to have money, but you know, you caught my attention when you said it's probably going to get passed onto a mutual fund. You know, I pay into a mutual fund. I think this is stupid. How how can they the government sit there and say that a single guy is going to get you know this amount of dollars, like five hundred, say for instance, and a guy that has more kids is going to get a thousand? You know, what what kind of crap is this? You know, we we all pay into this, and they decide what what's going to happen to the money. This is a quick fix. You this know, is I, what this is what communists used to call redistribution of wealth. Yeah, it's like a recycling facility here. Uh, why can't we just use our damn head like you say, read up a little bit? You know, I'm not always savvy, but you caught my attention when you said a mutual fund. I'm not savvy into this. Why can't we just use our head, read, and freaking figure out where we need a budget instead of throwing a quick fix out there, you know? Because we are a lazy, ignorant, goddamn country. That's what we are. All right? I'm done talking about this. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.